Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to show you um, four different pouring methods that I use to create these coasters. Um, I did some experiments trying to see how I could get um, the different types of striations, different color blending, um, different blobs falling through. So the results are pretty interesting. Um, like I said, there's four different ones that I try in this video. So if you're interested to see how I came up with these different looks, then keep on watching. All right, so I've got all my resins mixed up here. Um, I'm using two different colors of mica, a pink and a yellow, because I want to be able to see the difference when they combine. And then in the third cup, I have some folk art metallic paint in the color rose gold. Just want to try out some paint. And then in the fourth cup, I've just got some of those um, rose gold flakes. So you can see I have four coasters here. I have them all labeled so I don't forget what to do. <laughs> um, so right now I'm just putting a layer of clear down and I just want to cover the bottoms. I'm not doing a, like a super thick layer, but just enough to get clear across the whole bottom. So um, you can see my little notes there. Um, so the coaster on the left just says one mica. So I'm just going to do one ring of mica around the outer edge. The second one says two mica. So what I'm going to do there is use one ring of mica around the outer edge and then pour a second ring directly on top of it. The third coaster, I'm just gonna do a ring of the paint. And then the fourth coaster, I'm gonna do a ring of mica around the edge, pour the clear in, and then do another ring, quite several rings actually, um, just inside the first ring. So I'm just trying a couple different pouring methods here because I want to see what happens with these, these different pouring methods. So you can see I've got the pink ring down in all in the three. And in that second one, I just put the yellow ring on top of the pink. Now I'm doing the paint in the third one here. And um, now I'm putting the leaf in the center. And then I'm going to go in and pour the clear, which will push the leaf out. And it will also push um, all these rings that I've poured. It will push them all to the edges of the coasters. And then it will start that flow of them moving towards the center, which is how you get those really cool striations and effects. You have to push them out first so that they can come back in. So now I'm doing that second ring and I'm doing a very, very thin stream of resin. And as you can see, I went around several times and then I'm pouring some clear again and pushing that back out. So that's really all I am doing. I'm just testing out these four different techniques. Um, I do go in and put a little more uh leaf in the center just um, because they did spread out a little too far um, so I do add a little more off camera there but um, that's really all I do for these experiments so it's pretty interesting to see how the different types of pouring you get the different results so this is just after I poured just giving you a look um, just a close-up of them. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes. I just came back to pop some bubbles. Just want to give you a look at what's going on. So they have all moved quite a bit and they're all looking pretty cool. I love how these colors are blending. 
This is interesting. Because this is paint. It's not mica. Um, it is that uh, metallic paint. So you can see the glitter that's in it. But it is making these interesting... Focus. Um, these interesting little striations. So that's going to be interesting to see how that turns out. All right, so we'll come back um, probably in about 12 hours or so and unmold these and flip them over and see what we got. Okay, it's been about nine hours or so and these are nice and cured. So I'm going to pop them out of the molds. I'm excited to see what they look like. All right, first one here, this is the one where I just did a single ring of the pink mica just around the edge. Um, so you can see it did sink, which I was expecting, around the edge, and then some of it did pull into the center. So let's see what that looks like on the other side. Now there's still a little bit flexible, but that's okay. I wanna get them out. <laughs> All right. So that is a super cool effect. Now in a bigger coaster, um, I wonder if this would reach all the way to the center, if this, um, you know, when it kind of drifts into the middle, I wonder if it would have gotten all the way into the center on a bigger item. And I'm also curious what would happen if I had poured a thicker rim, like poured more down. Um, around the edge because that was a pretty small small stream super cool all right so that was just one ring of mica all right so the two mica one this is the one I poured the pink and the yellow obviously um, you can see both colors pulled in you can see all the striations in there so let's see what the other side looks like That's really neat. So you can definitely see that edge around it. And it's pretty consistent. Um, I tried to really pour that clear in the center when I poured the clear, because I wanted the edge to be even. Um, so it's pretty close. It's a little bit uneven, but not bad. Um, and I really like these effects. I don't know how well you can see it. But instead of like, you have the little blobs here and these striations also fell through the resin to, um, well, it was the bottom when it was this way, now the top. Um, and they were kind of sinking, but they didn't reach all the way to the base as because they were moving in and sinking at the same time. So it was like that really cool dimensional effect in there. So um, I'm gonna be doing some more experiments because I have all these questions like, what if, what if? <laughs> um, all right, so this was the paint and look at that. I had no idea if paint would give the same type of reaction as mica and it looks very similar. It's not as sharp like the striations that you can see. They're much more defined with the mica and they're kind of fuzzier with the paint, but you can see it's sunk down around the edge just like the mica did. So let's see what it looks like on the other side. These are my test molds, by the way. If you're wondering where I got these molds, these are from um, a company called Crown Made. Let's see the name there. They're awesome molds. Um, this set that I got had some damage in it, so they replaced them um, and just told me to keep these. So I use these for experiments like this, <laughs> um, but I really like them. They're nice and sturdy. They don't deform. You know, sometimes like the edges will deform on the cheaper molds. These are real nice, they're a nice size, like them. All right, so um, this was the tap, so flipping it over. So it's a similar effect but definitely not as um, crisp, 
It's, it's a little more blurry with the paint. But it's interesting that it gave um, a very similar effect. It's just a lot softer. All right, and then the last one, this one I used just the pink mica. And I put the clear down first. I poured a ring of pink around the edge. I put more clear. And then I poured some more pink. Um, and I did several rounds of it, but it was very, very thin, fine streams. So this looks really neat. Obviously, there's more mica in this than than these two. So there's a lot more coverage. I'm interested to see what would happen if I had done that with the yellow. You know, done the pink first and then the yellow. Have to try that. <laughs> All right, so get this one out. This one's thicker because I did that extra layer in there. Oh, that looks really cool too. So this, you can, hopefully you can see some of the little blobs actually made it all the way down to the bottom of the coaster as they were sinking versus this one, none of them actually made it to the bottom. So you just have the striations, like the 3D striations in there. This one, you have the 3D striations, but you've also got a couple blobs. Um, and I wonder if that's because the quantity, you know, there was just so much mica that it sank. Um, or maybe it was the circles that I did. I'm not sure what really caused that, but this looks so neat. So there we go. So those are the four experiments. I'm going to put some more experiments together because I have a lot more... Um, Kind of questions in my head, <laughs> scenarios of, you know, what ifs to try. So subscribe to my channel and I will be doing some more of these in the near future. Thanks for tuning in.